Hello everyone, I am Krishan. Today I am going to present my project, the Lunar Lander. In this project, we have a lander which attempts to land on the moon surface. The moon has some gravity. An initial force is applied on the lander. The goal of the project is to direct the agent, that is the lander, to the landing pad as softly and fuel efficiently as possible. The Lunar Lander is one of the environments provided by the OpenAI Gym Toolkit. The lander in purple is the agent and the moon is the environment. We will come up with a reinforcement learning based algorithm such that the agent achieves the maximum rewards at the end of one episode. The state space consists of the x and y coordinates, the horizontal and vertical velocities, the angle, the angular velocity and two boolean variables saying whether the legs are on the ground. There are four discrete actions that the agent can take. Uh, doing nothing, firing the left engine, firing the main engine, or firing the right orientation engine. So why reinforcement learning? We are treating the environment as a black box. We don't know the transition probabilities and the reward function. We will try these algorithms which are random baseline, queue learning, approximate queue learning, and deep queue learning. I start with a agent uh, which takes actions randomly. As we can see that the agent mostly crashes and gets negative rewards every episode. Then I, then I try the Q-learning algorithm. Q-learning maintains a dictionary where, where the state action pairs are the keys and the Q-values are the values. Since our states are continuous, we need to discretize the states. The Q-values are updated after every step using the Bellman equation. I use a step function to decay the exploration parameter every episode. I run the training for 10,000 steps. The agent was able to beat the random baseline and achieve positive rewards, but there is still a potential to improve. Then uh, I try approximate queue learning. Queue table had a lot of discrete states. It was very difficult to efficiently train the high dimensional discrete space. Hence, I needed to generalize. I used approximate queue learning to learn a linear representation of the queue values for each state action pair. I use a multi-class perceptron for this. However, uh, the queue, approximate queue learning converges to a lower average rewards. Increasing the number of exploration steps also does not help. Probably it is underfitting. How to verify that um, this algorithm that I wrote is correct? Uh, since the lander is actually a very complex environment, I came up with my own game to test the approximate queue learning algorithm. So the game's goal is given a target which is shown as the point with the number 100 and a starting state of the agent which is the number 1. The agent should reach the target as quickly as possible. The state space is the agent's x position, possible x positions. The agent can either take life, left or right. When the agent reaches the target, it gets a reward of 1. The agent learned the q-value function correctly most of the times, but sometimes it struggled at the edges. As we can see in the policy, it struggles at the state 6. But this proves that the uh, algorithm that I wrote for uh, approximate q-learning and the code that I wrote is correct. Although approximate queue learning works for simple games, it probably st struggles with underfitting issues for complex tasks like the lunar lander. Deep queue learning uses a neural network instead of a linear function approximation. But there are certain challenges of applying deep learning in reinforcement learning. Conventional deep learning assumes IID for all the training samples. But RL training samples are generated from experience and they are highly correlated. To solve this, DQL uses a mechanism called experience replay where the experiences are stored in memory and examples are sampled randomly during training. But it also introduces two additional hyperparameters, the replay memory size and the neural network architecture. I was able to achieve highly positive rewards after using deep queue learning. 
I used an exponentially decaying epsilon. I had to tune the hyperparameters extensively. For example, clipping the exploration parameter epsilon to 0.2 improves the performance of the agent. The left one is before the training and the right one is after training. The lander was able to land smoothly after training. Exploration was disabled during evaluation. So far, the environment was constant throughout the training process. To make the task a little bit difficult, I evaluated the agent using different seeds in every episode. Having a different seed changes the terrain and the initial force on the lander. Since the agent was trained using a fixed seed, the agent did not perform very well. Next, I trained the agent using random seeds instead of fixed seeds. The number of steps per episode increased. Careful observation shows that the agent spends most of its time stabilizing in the air and hence probably it consumes a lot of fuel which explains the decreasing reward. Further hyperparameter tuning can probably improve the performance. Here are my learnings after this project. Always start with simple algorithms and simple settings. RL needs a lot of hyperparameter tuning, especially the exploration parameter epsilon. I also needed to periodically monitor the renders and graphs using uh, during training to understand what is going wrong. Using GPUs did not speed up deep Q learning. And of course, RL is fun. The entire source code for this project is available in my GitHub repo. There is also a great paper which helped me understand DQL and assisted in tuning my hyperparameters. Thank you for watching.